John here guys and today we are doing a build of the massive droner, the more massive droner, the three inch version. Now uh, in my last review I already kind of went over the packaging of this thing so I'm going to skip that for now but you can check out that other one if you want to see more details about that. Let's go over the components that we are going to use. Now, as I said, the three inch massive droner, we are using the Brother Hobby 1507 3600 kV motors once again. This time though, I'm experimenting with a new stack. Now, I'm hoping that this is gonna be the micro stack of the future, which is the Heli Nation Talon F4, which as we all know, is almost a miniaturized version of the Hyperlite F4 OSD flight controller that I deemed the best flight controller of 2018. So is this a micro version of that? Let's find out. I'm gonna be pairing that with the Speedix 20x20 20 20, 20 amp ESC, an AKK FX3 using MMCX Foxier Micro Monster camera, the awesome Jim Fan 3052, uh, three inch props, um, which are the best three inch props on the market today, in my opinion. And of course, the trusty XM Plus receiver. And we're going to be soldering everything up with the amazing TS100 portable soldering iron. Now, I am going to be using that plugged in to a wall outlet, so I don't have to worry about having a lipo, but I love the versatility of this thing. This is also my field soldering iron that I keep in my flight bag at all times. So let's get started. Now I'm gonna format this much like the build video for my Hyperlite Floss. Um, and I'm just gonna show certain parts of the build. I'm not gonna go and make you sit there and watch all my soldering and whatnot because that's boring. And I found that following that format when I did my last build video of the Hyperlite Floss 2.1, it seemed to work for everyone. So let's try that once again. So first thing I'm gonna do is get the bottom plate of the frame ready so that I can install everything else. Now, I'm gonna be doing a series of micro videos. I'm gonna be building up an identical build to this with the 4100 kV version of this motor to get some comparisons there. And I'm also gonna be comparing the final product to this, which is the 2.5 inch massive droner on 1106 motors to find out what is the difference in how these things fly when I do them back to back. So at the end, we'll show a size comparison between those two. Um, and for now, of course, we have all of the package uh, items in here, but really for now, we just need the bottom plate as we start to assemble the stack. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do first is put the bottom pieces um, on here and then we'll get ready to do the rest of the stack. Now, first thing I do is I put my long screws in there with some standoffs to where I can start mounting the stack. Now, when you're building um, any size quad, you always wanna have plenty of hardware. So since this is a micro, I have my box of M2 screws of all lengths and M2 standoffs. Now, a lot of times these components like the flight controller and the speed controller come with various bits of hardware, but um, I'm preferring to actually use my own stuff and then I can choose the exact size and length that I want. So first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and just slide the uh, speed controller on here. And because these screws are so long, you might have to kind of wiggle them a little bit to go into place, uh, which is fine. That's what you have to do when you use really long screws like this. So I use a standoff that has a little bit of room in the bottom and that's where I'm gonna stick my receiver at the end. So I don't know if you can see that little gap right there. That's where the receiver is gonna go at the end. So now I can kind of attach my motors and start wiring those up. And then I can also just test fit how the flight controller is gonna fit on there on top like that. And then the speed 
control is going to go on top like that. Now, what's one thing that I can see immediately? <coughs> and that's that I'm going to run out of room. These screws, even though they're the longest ones I have, are still just not quite long enough to run the full length of this stack. So, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm probably going to run a standoff on here at the top of this um, that has a little screw coming out of it, and then we'll screw the top one on here. And I'm also going to want to test fit at some point that it sits low enough for everything to actually fit inside the cage of the frame. So we'll do that later. Let's go ahead and start soldering up the motors. Okay, so now I have the motor wires soldered up, but what do I notice here? And that is that, I'm not sure if this is gonna work. I normally like to run my wires on top of the ESC like this on my full size builds. But uh, since this is a micro, if I slide this flight controller and I have the gummies, look, it doesn't sit down there. That's not gonna work. Um, but the Speedix has pads on both sides. So what I could do is take everything off and re-solder everything on the bottom, uh, or I could just flip everything. So I think I'm just gonna flip it and leave the connector on the top. And that's the nice thing about um, only have having screwed in one motor screw is I can just undo these, flip the whole thing, and I'll be in business, and I should. Still have a little bit of room in the middle to slip my receiver on and keep it on the bottom after I flip this. So it's flipping time. Okay, so now I have everything flipped and it screwed down. I went ahead and, and uh, soldered on the power leads. I'll go ahead and cut that shorter later and use this XT30 that actually came with the Heli Nation Talent F4. I didn't realize this was gonna come with this because I bought a pack of these um, to do some builds, but this is an awesome bonus. Um, so now that I have that flipped with the wires on the bottom, wow, look how clean this is. This is immaculate. This build is gonna be so clean. Um, and I, since I'm gonna be building several of these, this one or one like it may actually be for sale at some point. So some lucky viewer may be able to purchase this later on. So keep your eyes open for that. Um, and one cool thing I left one of these off is that this flight controller has 20 by 20, but it has M3 size holes. So you can use this on a full size build and it has these little gold metal things right there that just screw on. I'm gonna, I left the last one. They screw onto a M2 size screw and they leave you with an outer diameter of an M3 size screw so that you can fit this flight controller with your gummies just like that. Whoa, that is so awesome. And look how cleanly that just fits right on there. And I think I'm actually gonna need something a little bit taller because I forgot to account for that connector, but I love this. Oh my gosh, this stack is gonna be so clean. Okay, so let me start soldering up the receiver, camera, and VTX for the flight controller. Okay, so now I have the rest of the VTX wired up and I have the camera wired up. So I'm gonna go ahead and solder on the XT30 connector, triple check everything, and then power up so I can bind the receiver and finish the rest of the stack. Okay, so here we have the completed stack. I'm gonna go ahead and put some electrical tape to tape down the wires, and then I'm gonna install the cage. See where it's bound. I think I may end up having to leave it on the top up here, but we'll take a look and let's keep going. Okay, so now I'm starting to assemble the rest of the frame. I went ahead and used these 3D printed pieces here. 
And I'm still not 100% on where I'm gonna mount my receiver. For right now, I kinda just have it sitting behind the camera. It's not my favorite, but it will actually do. And the antennas do reach around. I kinda would rather have it up here. And that just goes to show, even when you plan everything out, it doesn't always work out if you're not paying close attention. I was thinking I was gonna put it down here, but I forgot, that's where the battery strap has to go. Come on, John, what are you thinking about? So, uh, will I put it, will I leave it here? Or will I move it up here? If I move it to the top, it's gonna block the uh, LED readout for the VTX. But do I really need that if I'm using smart audio? Uh, I'm not really sure. I may do that. And I'm gonna install, of course, the optional uh, back brace. I do love that that Talon F4 came with a black XT30 connector, which is awesome. And I'm just finishing it up. One thing I did forget is that I do not have any um, four cell XT30 small batteries right now. I had five and I sold them. Uh, so I have a couple of these 3S batteries that I run on my smaller motor and this will be enough to hover it but I'm really gonna have to get a couple more batteries before I maiden it so let's go ahead and finish up the build I will program a butterfly on here and uh, I may do a separate video for a butterfly slash beta flight speed run to see how fast I can get it done but this is pretty much done guys and let's clear a few of these things out of the way I just absolutely love how these things uh, come out they are so nice they are so clean oh look at how nicely the wiring just all fits in there and um, let's do a quick um, size comparison between the 2.5 inch and the 3 inch so it's not like a, t a huge difference really it's everything's a little bit thicker the arms are a little bit further out to fit a 3 inch versus 2.5 inch but here's what's going to be coming soon which is I'm going to compare the three of these together so this is a 3 inch running 1106 motors versus a three inch with 1507 motors versus a 2.5 inch with 1106 motors. And we'll see how they all perform and which ones perform the best. So that's gonna be coming very soon. I'll, uh, if I end up getting a battery to fly this with, I'll throw up some flight footage or I may just go ahead and upload this and you'll see all the flight footage when we do the big video comparing the three different micro motor sizes.